Hi everyone, it's Janet here. I'm just um, checking my hive that's located on my small balcony. Um, I'm going to be harvesting some honey if there's any hive, um, honey in there to take. Um, and just to check that the queen's laying and, and all is well. So what I've got is my trusty stainless steel bowl, a kitchen knife, a tea towel and um, a water sprayer which has cold water and also a Varroa homeopathic treatment in it which I use to um, quieten the bees and also as a natural Varroa um, treatment. But as you see this, this balcony has got a nice view of the surrounding garden and it's a really strong hive, it's been doing really really well, been getting a lot of honey out of it. It's now early autumn so really I'm, I'm looking at the honey stores and making sure that I'm, I'm leaving some in for winter. So this is probably my last um, potential harvest of honey until spring next year. So I'm just removing um, some of the end top bars. Here's some comb here. Beautifully lovely built comb um, but no honey on that. just use my knife to slide in between each top bar frame um, and just prise them apart to release that propolis. Here's another comb here with um, the start of some nectar being placed into the comb by the bees. There's a few brood um, drone, drone bees on that too but they're still obviously bringing in some nectar. And you can see it's you know it's lovely straight comb in their own unique shape, but it's it's beautiful and straight. Again, just to release any bridging comb, just gently slide your knife up either side of along the the uh, wooden side of the hive. Take some of those bees off just so you can see the comb. Another lovely new comb here and on this side you can see that they're starting to cap some honey. So this area here so that's capped honey and there's some nectar in these cells here. These are nice bees, they're nice and docile. Um, I, I never use a smoker with my top bar hives, I find that they, they just don't need it. Again, I just shake those bees off gently. More nectar in those cells. And on the other side, some capped honey too. Beautiful comb. Now here's a bit of an older um, frame of comb. There's some drone brood here at the bottom, there's those bullet shaped cells and some capped honey up here and pretty much empty cells in here too, a bit of nectar and on the other side we've got more capped honey, no pollen but some worker brood here and a little bit more drone cells there so that looks all good too. What I like to do is when I see the drone cells is just open up a few um, and pull out some of the larvae checking for Varroa numbers. I found in this hive um, they've just um, they've got hardly any Varroa at all and I, I haven't actually treated them with any chemical preparations because I just haven't felt I've needed to. Um, it's a quite young, young drone brood there. Um, what I have been doing 
with this hive is the, the, the three entrance holes at the front of the hive, I've um, inserted some copper strips so that the bees to enter the hive need to go through these little copper circular strips. Um, and you know, I use copper in the garden as a natural miticide. I spray it on my fruit trees and vegetables and I'm, you know, it's just really an experiment to see whether that does anything for the bees as a, as a natural deterrent for, for the Varroa mite. And um, I mean it's totally unscientific of course, but I have found that this hive is particularly low in Varroa. It's also got a screened mesh floor which is left um, the, the hinged floor is left open over summer, um, but obviously I, you know, I keep a really close eye on any varroa levels um, and I would treat if I you know, felt that the varroa levels were, were getting high, but I haven't needed to with this hive. So it's just, just something to perhaps um, you know, consider for your own hives at home. We're getting into some nice worker um, brood comb there and obviously the queen's been on this comb because there's uncapped cells and larvae that I can see inside there so that's all looking good too. So I'm not doing a full hive check today so um, now that we've got into the, the brood section of the hive, I'll, I'll start putting back these frames. And it's also really important to put them back in the same order. So I always sort of stack them up like this so I know what order to put them back in. I harvest about uh, eight jars of honey from this hive around about um, a fortnight ago. So. You know, I wasn't expecting a lot of lot of honey, but it's pretty good. I might harvest this this comb for my own uh, supply. So what I do is I shake the bees off, or gently brush them off, and then very working very quickly, I cut with my kitchen knife at the top of the top bar leaving about two centimetres of the comb and then I quickly throw a tea towel over that container so that the bees can't get back into it and get their honey back and then it's just a matter of replacing the comb in the order they came out of the hive being careful not to squash any little bees Even though this, this hive is on my balcony and the balcony leads to the kitchen, um, I found that it's a really great place to have a hive. Because the balcony is raised, the flight path of the bees is raised, so they, you know, there's no chance of the kids running in front of the hive. Um, the only consideration I need to remember is in the evening, I don't leave the lights on in the kitchen if I've got all the windows and doors open because the bees are a little bit like moths, they'll fly towards the light and come inside. There we are, all nicely prized in. And then I'll start at the other side to check the other end for any honey that can be harvested. nice fresh new comb that the bees are busy building. At this time of the year they're really sort of um, getting to the end of their comb building time and really getting into the consolidating their honey stores for winter. Let's brush those bees off so you can see the honey. There we are. So they've built this comb over the last fortnight and they uh, have started to cap some honey there and filling the rest of those cells up with beautiful nectar. 
clever bees. Oh, and the other side is, hasn't been capped yet, but it's, um, it's full of nectar. Again, some lovely capped honey. I'll probably take this frame of, um, of honey. Let's check a few more. another comb here, a little bit of honey capped up here and some some larvae in there so the, the queen's been on this comb and um, so this will be st the start of the brood so I won't, I won't be taking this frame or any more nearer to the to the end of the hive and as you see I mean cool. For all those skeptics out there, it's it's a technique of handling the comb, but once you learn how to handle it, how to hold it, very rarely would would um, would break the comb. And you can see that you know there's there's no no bridging comb there. That's a lovely smooth edge, lovely smooth edge all along here. Um, so you know these hives they don't need frames on them. The bees know what to do, and they can, as you can quite simply see, be easily inspected for any exotic diseases.